श्री मोहपात्र जी श्री अग्रवाल जी सिंह जी मिस्टर मोहपात्रा डिस्टिंग गेस्ट लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट्स माई प्रिविलेज टू बी हियर एट द इनाग्रल सेशन ऑफ द सिक्सटीन नेशनल काउंसिल फॉर सीमेंट एंड बिल्डिंग मटीरियल्स इंटरनेशनल सेमिनार my compliments to ncb for the tremendous work that they do for the cement and building material industry in india with respect to research and development on innovative technologies technology transfer and implementation of the same in partnership with the industry and providing continuing education and industrial services they are partnering very closely with government on policy formulation and ensuring that consumers interests interest for cement and concrete are well protected they deserve a huge compliment for organizing this fantastic seminar which is an excellent platform for developing deeper understanding of technological developments that are taking place in the industry and i'm sure that the deliberations will be of immense value to the industry friends while the theme is clean and green is sustainable i dare to say that cement industry has been practicing it over decades and as you are aware that cement industry is the second largest in the world with a capacity of over 400 million tons and as most of the capacity or 50% of the capacity has come up over the last decade we are fortunate to have the state of the art plants which cause the least environmental impact and our ratios as mr singhi earlier pointed out are possibly among the best in the world i'm also very proud to say that cement industry has been at the forefront of sustainability and much before climate change became a buzzword the industry way back in 2005 6 took the initiative of working on sustainability through cement sustainability initiative a global initiative but it was always recognized that india led that effort from the forefront so industry has always been proactive and ahead of its time and we need to continue with that the cement industry has always worked on four principles pertaining to sustainability the first one being continuously improving its environmental profile through improving energy efficiency and reducing co2 emissions second a firm belief that what is good for environment is also good for business both short term and long term thirdly that the industry ne uh, needs to earn the right to operate not just from government and regulatory authorities but also from the society at large and friends most importantly the belief that you need to take the society along with you by taking care of the surrounding communities a must for inclusive development friends let me elaborate on each of this while india had the advantage of being late entrant to the cement industry and therefore setting up the best plants the industry did not rest on its laurels but kept continuously working towards improving its environmental profile today india's specific thermal energy consumption is at 2.83 against a global average of 3.5 i mean that that's the india's best with an average of 3.1 sorry the specific ele electrical energy consumption is at 80 versus 91 being the global average with 65 being the best in india we have reduced our co2 emissions by over 36% in the last two decades alternative fuels which were hardly in use today account for 4 to 5% of the total energy consumption while i say this i fully recognize that europe consumes about 41% of its energy consumption is met through alternative fuels and this clearly is an area which offers huge opportunity for us in close partnership with the government the regulation need to be put in place that instead of being an industry which can take care of a lot of the waste which gets generated like mr singhi was pointing out being a cement industry being asked to bear the brunt of 
having to use it in an in economically unviable manner. The blended cements have gone up from 37% to 73% in the last two decades. And this so-called, the, the phenomenon towards circular economy which is being talked about, the cement industry has been practicing it. And uh, my guess was that we possibly use over 50 million tons, but I think Singhiji pointed out almost about 60 million tons of uh, uh, waste of other materials that the industry uses every year with a huge potential to use even more with some of the policies that he outlined. And uh, I believe that there's a huge scope for a very holistic and working on this across industries, along with the government and the cement industry. The industry has also been at the forefront of going in for renewable energy. Today, the waste heat recovery systems have been installed by most of us uh, with the economics becoming favorable Again, renewable energy, the industry has been at the forefront of it, like Singhiji was talking about, the huge potential that the industry offers, but it's not only the potential, the industry has already been working on it very extensively. And the reduced cost of solar energy, of course, has been a big thrust, as also the government policies on encouraging solar industry in this country. The industry is always located in uh, very water-starved areas, and the focused effort that Every industry member has made, has made sure that most of us are today water positive. That means we contribute back to the society much more water than we take. Again, friends, while a lot of talk has been going about plastics, and there are already companies within the Indian uh, ecosystem in the cement industry which today use more plastics, that is they burn more plastics than the, number, the plastic that they consume, and it, this offers, again, a huge potential. I would urge the government to make sure that those who are creating the use of plastics be asked to provide it to the cement industry appropriately, which can, again, offer the scope of being able to utilize the entire plastic that gets generated in this country in a very meaningful manner. Not only on the technical side, but the industry has also taken a lot of steps to make sure how it can reduce its logist uh, the environmental footprint that great get created outside of its uh, plants. And one of the big ways that it has done is by going near the center of the uh, consumptions. Therefore, I think India is one place where you find that this model of grinding plants being set up near the consuming centers has come up, especially because our limestone tends to be concentrated in a few pockets. So that's again an immense initiative which has been taken, which has resulted in a reduction of the footprints, the, the environmental footprint that would have been caused due to transportation of the material. As I said, a significant work has been done. We do recognize that it's a continuous journey, and in order to remain ahead in the world, we'll have to keep working, and I did share a few other thoughts. A few other thoughts which come to mind are with respect to WHRS being classified as renewable energy. The other thought which I want to leave behind with you is that in India we tend to talk a lot only in terms of cement. But cement never gets used as cement. Most of the time it gets converted into concrete. And that again offers a huge opportunity because we have a very small ready mix industry compared to the overall consumption of cement which gets used as concrete. And how do we not only just go in for RMC, but tailor make products which can provide greater efficiency is again a huge area of opportunity for us to further improve our environmental profile. While a lot of talk is there about carbon capture, and I'm also privy to some of the discussion that take place as to how you know some of the initiatives, pilot plants in Canada are putting it under the, uh, under the uh, big land that they have there, they have some um, uh, hills under which they want to store it, I wonder whether that technology is going to be equally suitable for a country like India, which is relatively land starved. We have more population compared to the landmass that we have, and which means that we as industry leaders have the responsibility to think of alternatives instead of only focusing on one aspect of the technology, which is carbon capture. Even if we were to capture the carbon, whether we'd be able to store it, which is the other part which the key people call, keep talking about, or we put it to a productive use, and this is, of course, one of the biggest challenges facing our industry, which we need to address together. 
friends, we have always worked with the philosophy that what is good for environment is good for business. I talked to you about the huge jump that has taken place in the blended cement over the last 20 years. And obviously, it has also had a very positive economical benefit because limestone is, again, a very scarce resource in this country. And the more blended cement has met, meant that we have been able to make more effective use of this scarce resource. Again, the, more, the use of alternative cementitious material has been both to the advantage of environment as well as has helped companies improve their cost structure. India has always had a very high energy cost, continues to have very high energy cost, and as Singhiji pointed out, due to multiple reasons, not due to the fact that the industry is in any way inefficient, but therefore, any reduction in power and energy consumption has always had a very positive impact on the cost structure. And of course, with the prices of new technologies coming down, now WHRS power is available for a variable cost as, as low as 50 paisa, and of course, solar power at sub rupees three clearly have a very beneficial impact on the cost. So clearly, it's not a question of industry just talking about it, but it has walked the path of on the firm belief that what is good for environment is equally good for economics. Now let me, friends, earn, er, uh, come to the third point about earning the right to operate from everyone. And we do recognize the greater awareness of society regarding climate change and the environmental aspects. The industry, therefore, has always focused on doing much better than the regulatory norms of environmental, which have been prescribed in this country. And cement industry has not just been compliant with what the regulation that have been put, place in, put in place by government, but has also partnered in various initiatives with government, be it Swachh Bharat, or the latest thing in terms of um, uh, making sure that there's greater awareness about disposal of plastics in an environmentally friendly manner. And the various efforts that have been made by it on sustainability right over the last 15, 20 years has clearly made sure that not only is this industry earned its right to operate, but is respected for being at the forefront of all the improvements. Friends, the other important thing is that you cannot live in an island of prosperity in a country. And there again, the cement industry has been at the forefront of recognizing this as, as I explained earlier, most of our plants locate, they tend to be located in pretty backward areas. And most of the players, I would dare say maybe all the players in the industry have been carrying out significant initiatives for these communities in the fields of education, healthcare, sustainable livelihoods, social infrastructure, and reform. Ultratech itself touches the lives of about 1.6 million people in about 500 villages through its CSR activities. I do not have access to the industry numbers by extrapolation. It means that the industry touches the lives of about six to seven million people in a positive manner every year. Clearly, doing its bit toward the society in its due recognition of the help that we get from them. Friends, I hope that I have been able to convince you that we have a rich legacy of the industry having lived on the premise of clean and green being sustainable, and we need to carry it forward even more vigorously. And I'm confident that whether now or through your deliberations, as well as through our joint efforts, we will continue in this direction and continue to be lead the way towards us being a shining example of clean and green energy, clean and green industry being sustainable. So thank you very much. I wish you great deliberations and all the very best. <laughs>